ACB tech stuff. I know it's been a long time since I posted anything. Anyway, today I'm going to finally show you my compilation of building my sleep build, Page Billy, a 1999 gateway. I picked up this old PC with some others from my computer and phone repair a few years ago and held onto it to build what I consider to be the ultimate sleeper for Windows 10. I waited till Windows 7 support ended. Well, I got a head start anyway. This is a 99 Performance 700 by Gateway, full ATX tower, came with a Sound Blast card, dual port firework card, old VGA card, dialed up modem, CD-ROM, floppy drive, Pentium 3, Windows 95, and an IDE hard drive. The last owner apparently added more RAM, a DVD writer, and upgraded to XP at some point. Alright, so I'm test fitting the motherboard with power supply in it. I've got more space between the two than I thought, which is great. Of course, I still have to modify the back side because of this switch. And I'm also probably going to cut out the slot cut out a square so that there is nothing behind the CPU socket. Alright, so I have test mounted the power supply in the newly trimmed case with only three screws because I can't get to the holes right here so for these sharpie marks that I might drill two more holes but actually with three screws this is solid it's pretty snug in there these screws that came with the case these are original screws fit the threads on the PSU, it didn't come with any screws because it was an open box. All it came was with the PSU and the cables. But thankfully the screws also fit our I.O. panel. As you can see, I actually had to do some trimming on this. It ain't pretty. I did it with a Dremel tool. I notched this out so that I won't have issues with the R80 millimeter fan. It's right here. And I also trimmed out this nice square, so one, there's nothing directly behind the CPU. Don't worry about arcing, just in case. And I have access for our heat seek mount screws because on the board it has holes that go through the motherboard. It's coming together. Now I'm just waiting on some of the other stuff I ordered. I ordered a 140 millimeter fan. That will go right here. Now 140 millimeters, five inch by five inch, roughly. This is about a five and a half by six inch square. And just drill a couple of holes, pop it in. Bada bing, bada boom. On test fitting the motherboard into the case, I ran into a slight snag. I was going to see if the power connector was going to work off the original setup but uh, the pin pattern is different the JP or JFP1 connector which is standard has a 9 pin 10 socket setup right the original here only needs 7 pins but it has a 14 pin with one missing header and I can't find adapters for these anywhere so I actually just ordered one from Lee and Lee a replacement power button power and reset button so, so much for that all right so I did a test fit with the 1080 Ti and it actually looks like I've got plenty of room and I'm shocked of course, it's with it in the first PCI slot. I 
We got a fully siege in there, it feels like it. Anyway, one thing I don't like about it is that it sits right on top of SATA ports, just like my current PC. Don't know why they always gotta put the SATA ports right there. Anyway. And I put a little bit of duct tape over the mouse trap to kind of cover my CPU port while I'm working on this stuff. The screws all line up with the motherboard. So there's no worry about arcing down there. I did take out a couple of these standoffs. And as far as hard drive storage, I'm probably going to have something... The original cage goes right here. But I might actually find a, a rack or something to put it in this area, if I have room. Because I'm probably going to do away with that old DVD drive. I have a good Blu-ray drive in my current PC that I'm probably just going to reuse. I was going to keep the floppy for decoration, but we'll see what happens there. It's actually got two slots for floppies. Plus two more five and a quarter inch drive. So yeah, that's today's progress. I guess the next step is to get the power thing figured out. Alright, so I've got the new RAM installed by itself, where it goes, and I'm going to go ahead and test it, make sure it all works, and then I'm going to try working them together to see if there's anything I need to be aware of. So something interesting I just noticed about this, even though this is obviously much older RAM, the model numbers aren't really that different. Of course, the XMS3 is CMX16GX3, M4A 1600C9, whereas the Vengeance is CMZ. And that's really the only difference. Everything else is pretty much the same except for the version number, which I'm sure is model specific. Other than that, these are practically identical. Of course, on the Vengeance you can see that the pairing the grouping is actually down to the serial number here in the last number. Alright, so I want to do a visual comparison of the old RAM with the new RAM. These Vengeance heat spreaders are massive compared to the old XMS3 stuff, which by the way I got off eBay about a year ago. I upgraded from PNY Optima 1333 to this. I think I spent about the same on it. Ironically, when I sent the PNY, or I sold it on eBay. I ended up refunding the guy who bought it because, lo and behold, one of those sticks apparently went bad. So I don't know if this board just kills a single stick of RAM running into 4 channel or what. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, this is the new Vengeance. And I was wrong on those numbers before. It's actually the first set of numbers that determine which pairs are which. So this is a pair, 200 and 201, and this was a pair, 208 and 209, 209 being the bad one, which was the third stick in my configuration originally. Of course, that one's not going back in the rig, but I'm gonna see maybe if I can make the seven of these work together. If anything, I'm at least gonna put the new RAM in there. And if I can't get it all working together nice and smooth, I'll probably just sell these on eBay or keep them around for a future project. You never know. It's always good to have spare RAM around, even if it is older RAM. Okay then, so I'm currently running Memtest 86 with all 28 gigabytes of RAM. That is right, I put all seven sticks of RAM in this thing. <sighs> So far, it's passing good. Although, um, for some reason in the BIOS, when I, it won't let me enable XMP settings, the extreme memory profile, for all 7.6. I guess it only does it if you have dual channel, triple channel, or quad channel set up. 
But since I only have seven sticks instead of eight, it won't let me. I did manually have to change the RAM frequency back up to DDR 1600 because it defaults at DDR 1333 for some reason. Anyway, I just wanted to run this test just to be sure there won't be any errors running all seven sticks together. It might slow me down a little bit in some areas. There's only one way to find out. I'm going to play Skyrim when this is done. 28 gigabytes isn't too extreme. In fact, as far as uh, Beige Billy goes, that is the Gateway Project. <laughs> Instead of doing 16 gigabytes like I originally was going to do, I now wound up with 32 gigabytes. One pair of G-Skill Ripjaws RAM and one pair of uh, Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM, and both of those are DDR4. And it has four RAM slots, so I'm just going to go ahead and keep both. I only bought the G-Skill RAM because I thought my other RAM was bad when it turned out it was actually the power supply I had bought. The power supply should be actually reaching EVGA in a day. Because I shipped it back to them on Friday. And they're supposed to be giving me an RMA on that, so I can get a new one. Stay tuned. By the way, it runs Skyrim phenomenally. Although one of my mods no longer works, but it's a minor mod. Anyway, I ran user bench, and it just finished up. This result is a screenshot I took from before from, let's see, according to the date on this, I did this back in July, on July 12th, with my old setup, with the uh, old hard drive and old RAM before it all crashed, and that was on Windows 7. And as you can see, it had a great gaming score, decent desktop and easy workstation score. The only downer was the OS since it was Windows 7. That was before User Benchmark changed its rule, or changed its uh, counting on CPUs. And I think that had a big effect on the score because my scores actually went down. This is the one I just got. 69% gaming, 49% yacht went down, workstation even went down. I don't know if the fact that I have more RAM actually attested to that or not, but I also had more low background load on the CPU. I think that might be why. Two, that could help. And for some reason it's saying my boot drive might be what's slowing me down. I find that odd because I had a mechanical hard drive when I did that benchmark too, and it didn't count against me. I don't know. I do not know. Oh, and I'm also running RAM faster now because when I did this, I did not have the extreme memory profile settings dialed in. I was running at 1333 megahertz on 16 gigs of RAM, and now I'm running 28 gigabytes of RAM at 1.6 gigahertz, or 1600 megahertz. I don't think I like this result. But then again, that could be also because of benchmarks changes. We'll see. I personally think the PC is running better than ever, even after I put Windows 10 on it. It boots faster than ever. Yeah, even though I don't have as much stuff installed on it now, program-wise. And I'm sure there's ways I can probably speed up the performance on this thing. I haven't totally optimized it yet. But anyway, there you have it. It lives. It lives. The cable's a mess. 
And I don't have everything put in there yet, but it lives. <laughs> Thank you, EVGA, for replacing that broken power supply. I was thinking I knocked to a badge and my G-Skill sticker looked pretty good in there. Okay, so I've been working on this thing all afternoon. I went into it back down. I think we got ourselves a faulty motherboard. I can't get a video signal on it out at all. I tried a different graphics card that didn't do it. I tried different RAM sticks that didn't do it. I know the power supply is good. And at least half my RAM sticks are good. And I'm pretty sure the CPU is good because I just looked at it. Cleaned all the thermal paste off of it. Heat sink. I opened up the mouse trap and looked at the pins. Nothing's bent and there's no thermal paste or anything like that down in there. <sighs> and I know it's got a new battery because I put that in there. I don't know. It is Cyber Monday. December 2nd, and it finally works. It finally works. After all the pain and shipping and waiting. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm really exasperated. I'm just super excited. As you can see, I got it booted to BIOS. I even put down one of my monitors off my racks to test it. RMAing the board and RMAing the power supply were worth it. It turns out I guess my board was bad. <sighs> now to finish getting this thing put together and set up. Alright, so I'm running Memtest86 on my used RAM, which is the Corsair Vengeance LPX. And looks like one of the sticks has some errors. The other stick passed just fine. So, I guess I'll have to quarantine this stick. And it kind of sucks. But, I mean, I still got 28? No, that's not right. I'll still have 24? Yeah, 24 gigabytes and I guess if I need to I can always get another pair of G skill or I can probably get just another single 8 gigabyte stick to replace the bad one after all it is Cyber Monday I'll have to do some shopping alright after a short scare some spray painting and fitment I think it's finally com complete other than getting the side panel on over there it scared me there for a few minutes because it didn't want to boot or didn't want to come on with the hard drive and the Blu-ray drive installed, but it's going now. Alright. Turn it back off for a second. Put the side panel back on. Hook it up to my monitor and see if I can get Windows installed. Finally. I got everything except for my gaming hard drive installed. I finally got the M.2s in. There it is down there. Got my drive in and I'm about to install Windows on the boot drive. Time to make a dream a reality. Alright, I just ran user bench. As you can tell, it's probably not the quietest thing. There's a lot of background noise going on right now because I'm a dehumidifier. But the loudest thing on this PC is probably this fan on the panel right here. It's a Rogen Tech fan that I bought. It's the only non Noctua fan, and of course it's going to be the loudest, but hey, it sucks in cold air, and that's what it's for. And anyway, onto the user bench results. Bada bing, bada boom. Ah, those are the best results I've ever had. And it's not even overclocked. This is amazing. 
combination of the one terabyte SSD for boot, the 8700K and the 1080Ti, not to mention 24 gigabytes of RAM, all on Windows 10 is amazing. And we're back. It's been a couple of weeks now, I think. It is, uh, it's December 20th, a few days before Christmas, hey? And while Beige Billy is rocking and rolling along, I've decided to give it one more upgrade. This, I got it upside down, whoops, is a Thermalrite M.2 SSD cooling heatsink. I picked it up off of Amazon for I think it was twelve dollars. So why do I want to add a heat sink? Okay. It's a uh... Okay, it's running cool right now. I've got both H hardware monitor and crystal disc running here. It's of course I just fired it up like 10 minutes ago and it's running idle, it's not doing anything. I have noticed though that especially when I play certain games that are CPU intensive like VR chat or do programs that are intensive like Unity or several tabs of Chrome open and run like watching multiple YouTube videos, it gets a little toasty. Most of the time the hottest it gets is around 50 degrees Celsius. But once I actually get to editing more of these videos in Premiere, which I plan to get back into doing, I am worried that it's going to get too hot. Now, I understand these things can go up into pretty high temperatures, like up to 70 degrees Celsius is what most of them are rated for including this model. This is the Crucial MX500 SSD after all. As you can see right here. Anyway, I'm going to uh, run a couple of benchmarks, see how hot it gets. Maybe just open a bunch of tabs of Chrome and make them like run 1080 video, maybe like some <laughs> Linus videos or something. And I'll check the difference between that and that. Also, I apologize for the quality of this part of the video. I'm shooting this from my old cell phone because my Galaxy uh, is having difficulties right now. So, let's get into it. Alright, and since I didn't before, this is the 140mm fan I put in the vent panel. I never got a good shot of it, so here it is. And I've got the SSD out. Of course, as you can see, it's a 2280 form factor. Can't get this thing to focus. There we go. Max 500. That's crucial. Okay, so I got the heatsink on, it's in, it booted up, so is it did it right? One thing about the heatsink though, I actually had to take off the bottom thermal pad because it came with two. And I used some thermal paste I had instead on some of the exposed chips. Of course, I took the back label off. Pretty sure it's out of warranty anyway, so oh well. Um, anyway, that's gone going and so far it's actually a degree colder on idle and now the fun part begins 